Okay, in this presentation, we are going to use Laplace transforms to solve the integral equation. y of t is equal to e to the t plus uh, this uh, expression here. This is the convolution of e to the minus t times y of t. Okay, so the this is a sort of important thing to be able to spot this convolution expressions. Okay, just as a remark, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to hold up the sheet and just to sort of show you where it is sorry it's down the bottom here okay so let's just sorry let me focus that a bit so it's the second last one there okay so the convolution of that is uh, this convolution operator here and essentially the Laplace transform of this convolution is just the, um, of the two components just get the multiple of the, the product of the two Laplace transforms of the individual components Okay, so let's get down to business. Okay, so essentially, this is the, uh, uh, the, the essentially going to rewrite this as just using the convolution operator. Okay, just actually remind a uh, remark that just be careful with signs. We have e to the minus t here and e to the t here, and also plus here. Okay, so uh, left hand side, let, let's actually set, simply get an expression for this. And that's just y of s, okay. Then this component here, the right-hand side, e to the t, that is, from the formula sheet, that is simply a 1 over s minus 1. Now, this part here, the, in, the convolution of that, let's actually put in the operator there, which I forgot to do, is the uh, Laplace transform of e to the minus t, which is 1 over s plus 1, and the Laplace transform of y of t, which is again y of s, okay. So essentially when we uh, piece our equation together, this is what we get. y of s equals 1 over s minus 1 plus y of s, s plus 1. Okay, so essentially what we have to do is get an expression in terms of y of s, okay, and then get the inverse Laplace transform of that. So what I'm going to do here is actually I'm going to try and get y of s onto one, uh, all onto one side. So the, uh, what I had on the left hand side was simply y of s. Now I'm just going to multiply above and below by s plus 1. Okay, to get a common denominator with what's over here. Okay, so then I subtract uh, y of s over s plus 1 from both sides. So that's why I end up with s over s plus 1 times y of s. It's essentially this entire expression here, which, is a, is, um, which has a denominator of uh, s plus 1, minus this uh, expression here. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is simply cross multiply, okay? So s, and then I just get this expression here, s times, s plus 1 over s times s minus 1, okay? Now this is a sort of straightforward enough one, so essentially what I'm going to do there is I'm going to pause it a second, that should say partial fraction expansion, okay? Uh, just a little bit of a mark there anyway use partial fraction uh, partial fraction expansion to solve this so um, if you're not familiar with partial fraction expansion this is not a, not, a, not a good place to see it. it but essentially what I'm going to do is break this up into two fractions a over s and uh, plus b over s minus 1 which is essentially the these components here and what you do here is this is a polynomial of degree 1 this is a polynomial of degree 1 you multiply some coefficient here by a polynomial of what, a degree less than that. Well, actually, that's a bit of an oversimplistic explanation. But essentially, because this is a polynomial of degree 1, I can just put a constant here. And because this is a polynomial of degree 1, I can just put a constant here. So I cross-multiply them just to sort of simplify the expression. Okay. So if I find out what a and b is, I can actually rewrite it as this. So cross-multiply a s minus a plus b of s or b times s okay so a plus b s minus a over s times s minus one okay well a plus b must equal one s and minus a must equal one so a must equal to minus one and if a plus b is equal to one that means b is equal to two okay so let's just piece it all together y of s equals uh, well, that's a there, minus 1 over s, plus 2, which is b over s minus 1. Get the inverse Laplace transforms of both of those. 
we get minus 1 plus 2 times e to the t. Or you can actually just switch that round if you want. Uh, e to the 2t minus 1. Okay, for t greater than or equal to 0. So that's it. We leave it there.